Hi. So thank you for being here. Okay, so hi. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've been on. Okay, today is the first day of the new moon. So I'm sharing with you the new moon calendar and how to kind of keep track on your own. I'm going to go through all the way up to the next new moon because there are three days out of time that happen is so this is somewhat my and with some information from other people but more so my theory of the nine day moon calendar and i started doing this a couple years ago and i've been keeping track for a few years and it's kind of it's very telling to see how certain planets that are on the nine day calendar match or do not match with what is happening on the seven day Gregorian calendar. So with the seven day Gregorian calendar, we, we have the sun and the moon as part of the celestial um, planetary uh, objects that we basically worship because these are named after them and we when and when it comes to like esoteric magic we will devote energies to these certain days to invoke their energies well there's four other planets that energies are so important that we include them in our astrology so why don't we include them in our calendar so i've included them in the calendar so today being the first day of the new moon because this month the moon the new moon is lasting for three days today being the first day or midnight this morning being the first day so today tomorrow and monday are the new moon so we start with earth because earth would be first that's where we're from that's where we come from so earth is first and then we go out the closest to the farthest so then mercury would be tomorrow Monday would be Venus, Tuesday would be Mars, and Mars would be an extra power day because on the nine day calendar, it falls on a Tuesday, which is named after Mars, and it's Tuesday on the Gregorian calendar after Mars. So you have a, a, a heightened energy of that planet because it's falling on that day. And then we have Jupiter for Wednesday. Thursday is Saturn. Saturn. Friday is Uranus. Um, Saturday is Neptune. Sunday is Pluto. And then it starts over again. So then the 27th would be the first. And that's also the first quarter moon. Okay. And then, because I, I also pay attention to the moon, because this is what we're basing it off of. We're basing it off the moon. We're starting with the new moon, right? Okay, so then the 28th is Venus, and so it just continues. I'm sorry. The 28th is Mercury. Um, then Wednesday, the 1st would be Venus. Thursday would be Mars. Friday would be Jupiter. And um, the 4th would be Saturn. So we have another double power day where Saturn and the nine day Saturn day fall on the same day. So these will be days that I will be utilizing to help share my process and my experience and share with you the, those tools of healing the mother wound, um, specifically through the goddess practices and invoking like, not invoking, but um, um, facilitating personal intuitive 
growth through connecting with the goddesses if that's something you're interested in or just knowing about them and the truth about their history and how things have changed because this is a lot of what we're healing from our mothers had to heal from this goes way back so I'm working on it for myself because I know that that's something I ha I have to work on and that's kind of what brought me to the goddess but also Saturn is the energy of the of the great mother and the mother of transformation and so we bring in the scorpion Saturn and um, the connections between the chakras the energetic fields of in intuition and the energies of the celestial um, objects as well okay so then the next day sunday would be so sunday the fifth would be uranus and so that would be the first full moon day and then we have a full moon on the sixth and the seventh and then on the sixth it'd be neptune and on the seventh it would be pluto and then it starts again so then the eighth would be earth ninth mercury venus mars jupiter saturn neptune all the way up to the 16th pluto when so this would end the 21 day no three times nine 27 day three weeks of the nine day calendar would come to an end and be, and stop in time so to speak because the first days of the months would be the first day of the new moon and so the first day of the new moon is on the 20th so between the 16th and the 20th what i've been shared message message downloaded like oracle wise that um we would have days out of time so like the mayans had a, a whole a whole day out of time in their calendar to help stay in um, their time so to speak and what the great mothers used to do and i think is still being done today behind the scenes is awareness of this nine planetary day movement and where it would fall and how we would have done it as civils or as communities following this pattern following this kind of swirl anyways so we would practice days out of time to prepare for the new month prepare for the new moon prepare for what we're bringing in and this would range from food to uh, spiritual tools and practices so then it starts on the first day the first day of the new moon would be the 20th so then we would start again that would be earth and then it would be tuesday would be mercury and then wednesday the 22nd and so you continue this and then what i noticed is saturn so i go all the way i've marked the calendar all the way through june um, or up to june through may okay through the end of may and I've noticed there's only, there's no more Saturn's days. We have, um, we have a Venus day on the 21st of April where Venus falls on a Friday. And I think we have a Jupiter day. We do. So jupiter will also be on friday the third so it's another power day of march because jupiter Aquarius, yeah um is what friday is named for in spanish right but oh no no, no i'm wrong venus i apologize everybody thursday would be so we do have a power we do have a power venus day coming up in march as well which is march 10th but i'll i'll try to end the 31st hmm. wait so then 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay, Venus and Saturn both have power days opposite of each other. Hmm. So I'll probably do a little investing in all that. So I, I wanted to share that with you because today is actually a new moon. This, this will... This will help you tell what I'm trying to create and share the information as well and make it a little easier if you'd like to start kind of paying attention with your own nine day calendar. Now, uh, if I haven't mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it again. Get yourself an almanac, <laughs> farmer's almanac if you're in the States. And if you're somewhere where they have something similar, but you're not in the United States, you might want to check it out. It's pretty interesting. I mean, even if you're out of the States, I think there's information in here that is, it is, it's esoteric, it's hidden. There's, it's unhidden because it's in here. But, um, and one of the things that I kind of went down a little rabbit hole, well, I, I did two rabbit holes today. One is um, how, they talk about like, how do we protect the weather and this is what it says. We derive our weather forecasts from a secret formula that was devised by the founder of this almanac, Robert B. Thomas, in 1792. Thomas believed that weather on Earth was influenced by sunspots, which are magnetic storms on the surface of the sun. What do you think about that? This is way back then. Way back then. And then the other thing in here is that I was just looking at today. And so in here, it does show that today's the first day of the new moon and they show tomorrow. They don't show uh, Saturday is still being, they just go into a different um, context about, oh, because that's Sunday. So sun, they do, they have it as still the new moon. But Sunday is also known as, Goodness sakes. Um, Quanta Gustina. Quanta Gustina. So meaning it would be the... Eleventh Sunday before... It doesn't match with what they're telling me though. Sept would mean seven. Sex would mean six. Quant would mean eight. Hmm. You say the sept is the ninth Sunday before Easter. So there's a whole 70 day ritual that starts back in November that leads up to Easter that's practiced by Catholic Catholics. Well, I think the high ranking Catholics like the the cardinals and stuff, but it could be way off because the 26th is the first day of Lent. Now the first Sunday to Lent. Lent. Anyhow, um, and they tell you what's going on with the moon every single day. I mean, there's a lot of information in this tiny little book. And it's quite mind-blowing because things that we've been taught are kind of like magic or shouldn't be talked about. They're in this book pretty amazing and that's from 1792 so that also kind of shows like what happens with magic and what happens with stories okay so before I go <clears throat> one of the things I also started to started to do in lieu of the classes coming up on my patreon um was look up scorpion goddesses and one of the scorpion goddesses names is listen. Yeah, listen. 
So there's a link between Listen and another goddess because they both are linked to the heart of the Scorpion, which is the brightest star in the Scorpion constellation, which is also known as Atarius. No, An Antares. Antares. Um, so Listen is also known as Nigun, a Sumerian goddess. Okay identified with the star, uh, star, a Scorpionus, um, the heart of Scorpion. Now, if you do a little research on Listen, what you will find is that Listen is originally a goddess, but through time, Listen becomes a god. Listen, the goddess, consort, um, what did I did write down? Uh, I didn't, did I? I did not. Um, yes, I did. I thought so. Okay, hold on. Here we go. So, yeah, Mesopotamian deity, initially re regarded as a goddess and addressed as Ama, mother, who later came to be regarded as a god and developed an association with fire. So here's another link between the Scorpio transformation and the goddess. This is why probably a scorpion is used as her one of her symbols. The name was also applied to a star associated with Nabu. Nabu is an ancient Mesopotamian patron god of literacy, rational arts, scribes, and wisdom. <clears throat> Now, Listen's counterpart um, was first male, but then became a goddess instead. And then I did some digging, and um, the name Ninsikila is also linked to a place called Larsa. And that Larsa is in Iraq, and its name is Guadisia, like Guadesh, Guadisia, Govern Orate. Guadisia, Govern Orate. So, like we have governmental, Govern Orate is control over what you're speaking. Quadia, quadicia, quadicia. Okay. So I link that to Quadesh and the governing over oracles and, and kind of linking back to the control and hidden aspects of the divine feminine. Okay, is that all I want to share? I was so excited this morning. I've done a bunch of stuff. Okay, and then just some basic general healing to share. So yeah, the mother wound. Um, the more I've dug into my own personal healing and like my own recognition of like where where the world is with emotions and how how we heal emotions, how you can tap into the body, how things are stored in the body. Well, more and more research is showing and more and more personal expression is showing that there is an inner mother wound that most people have. Um, uh, I theorize that this comes together or kind of got a message download. So, I was watching a video on YouTube, and I've mentioned this before, where it's Sister Myra, and she talks about polarity, but specifically she talks about how Earth is a daughter. We call her Mother Earth, but she is a daughter. And that's, from my, from my downloads that I got, that is absolutely true. Earth is a daughter of Tiamat. She is a piece of Tiamat and then also part of herself to create where, where we can live. And so if you think about 
what daughter wounds, you know, mother wounds, even Gaia as a daughter mother herself would be going through as, as an energetic being. <clears throat> so there are celestial um, support. However, that actual like, so what we're having to do to heal the mother wound is what earth is also having to do to heal the mother wound, which is to begin to nurture herself, take care of herself, and I guess a little bit worry less about anything outside of herself. <laughs> because... There's abandonment there. There's um, um, what happened after trusting and then basically like trusting an energy to come in and what that energy has done. It's kind of harmed her, you know, from oil to garbage to, you know, like the footprint, so to speak. Um, and And then the long-term story of even the divine feminine and the daughter being hidden or being forgotten. And so um, much honor and thanks to Sister Myra and, and her peoples that gave her that information and helped her understand that information to share it with us so that this healing can also kind of rebound out there because when when I had heard that at first I was like really you know like it makes sense but then if you think about the healing that we're actually energetically stepping into here on Terra on Gaia on the planet and and how we call her the great mother well when we talk about our mothers and how we look at them they're also daughters <laughs> and they've also have their you know their stuff. So I can see how this great process of both us as daughters and children of mothers healing our mother wounds, because this includes the masculine as well, but also that reverberation back out to planet Gaia, planet Terra, mother, daughter, earth, daughter, mother, earth, in that um, integration of healing the mother wound. Um, and I had to share about Listen because her name is Listen. <laughs> and I, I was like, how come we have not heard about this? The only the only difference is there's no T in there. Like we have we have a T in it, right? List in. List in where this makes more sense l-i-s-i-n and i feel like this is more and more affirmation is coming up of many of the downloads that have been handed down and i think this is another one of them that most of our words languages names of places governments um govern oracle you know uh societies and civilizations like civilizations, civil lines. <laughs> I think it's, I think it also goes back to the great mothers and the great females and the prophetesses. And um, speaking of that, I'm just gonna, uh, I've mentioned him before, but I wanna re mention him again because he brought some, I talked about in a video about two years ago about the Kachina and the Orisha and how there's 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 some kind of similarity and Kimiro Ahau brings brings it breaks it down in one of his videos where he talks about how there's language from here that links to the Yoruba. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's all happening. The truth about the peoples of who we are. The truth about the great mothers and the sibyls and the prophetesses and who we are. <laughs> the truth about histories and economics and 
civilizations and the peoples and women in general and um, words and word plays and all that stuff. It's all happening. It's all coming out. It's all coming together. It's very exciting. All right. One more before we go. So I was writing the other day and that just what I just said about the word play. Oh, uh, because of what's happened with the train wreck. And um, and some dreams I'd happen in. And I happened to write down the word power plant. Why do we call it a power plant? Why do we call somewhere where we are growing, you know, chemicals or or... You know, it's not always bad. A factory. Why is a factory also called a plant? And then we have a plantation. So again, like the play on words is plant. And then we say well, you want to plant something in your mind, but that's a plant. So it's a verb and a noun. And then can be used as like a power plant. Um, because one more download message from the Great Mother and from the cosmos, so to speak, or from my guides and divines, is the possibility that we are more connected like trees than we are as, um, say, reptilian beings. Like, obviously... Because, you know, don't these look like knot holes? And then if you get really close, you know, doesn't this look like a tree? Tree bark, you know. We could say it looks like a reptilian, but did, which came first? <laughs> the tree or the reptilian? Like, trees shed their skin. They come in all shapes and sizes. I don't know if you guys saw that video, a little like TikTok meme video of that weird moving, um, that's not a plant. It's an actual, you know, um, animal being, but it looks like a moving root. And there are not, well, the trees did say they will be moving. People have had videos of moving trees. Anyways, um, we talk about roots and we talk about, there's just so much connection we also have to trees and then water, water is life and trees. Just throwing that out there because, and then there are pictures of the earth, like maybe this is why the earth is actually flat, <laughs> possibly. Although I did a video a while back ago where I was like, I don't think the earth is flat. What I heard is that today when I was rethinking about the planet and what shape it is, um, she's like, there's a mood, there's a vibration happening. So maybe sometimes the earth seems round. Um, I don't know. I still don't know that one for sure because... You know, I think about like the ancients. Why wouldn't they tell us? Why would they leave that out? However, on what I'm talking about, we do see pictures or depictions of a giant tree and its roots are holding the dirt, which is earth. So, and that's not round. So, just some things because... I think there's just so much we're not told and so many things like listens, not only the name changing, but the whole gender changing, the whole story changing. Like, thank goodness it was somewhere written otherwise or told or shared. Otherwise, listen, we wouldn't even know about listen, you know? All right. So you can find out more about goddesses, um, Scorpion goddesses, more about classes coming soon on my Patreon, which will be posted in the description. 
check out some of my older videos where I talk about what is coming in the future. It's kind of amazing and cool and also a little sad because some of the stuff is not great news that's come to fruition. But just showing like who the prophetesses are, who Sybils are, it's not it's not going to show up like we're the ones who have changed like it's biblical into meaning what it does because it was people telling stories and this story and and these stories happened to be decided to be published i mean that's like the whole thing right like when you're a writer it's a big deal to get published well we're talking about a book that was multi-published around the world for the world why you know, there's indoctrination in there and there's, you know, so just a little catch up, a little, a little, um, tap in because it's new moon today and it's lasting for two more days. So you actually have three days to practice new, new moon ritual. And my guess is probably tomorrow would be its strongest because it would be in the middle. I'm just theorizing that. All right. Thank you for being here. Uh, and until next time. Before we go, I have a little sound. Plenty of water and some rest. Hug yourself. <laughs> Hug yourself. Take care of yourself. Talk kindly to yourself. And until next time, take care.